If you want to learn how to properly clean a keyboard or you're just curious to see what I found underneath my keycaps, don't worry, I'm going to show you everything. Okay, before doing anything, the first step is to unplug the keyboard from the computer or take out its batteries if you're using a wireless keyboard. Then, grab your smartphone and take a full picture of your keyboard from the top so that you can easily get all of the keys back on in the right place. Important, realize that your keyboard will be out of commission for a while, up to 12 hours for drying the keycaps, so it may be a good idea to bring out a spare keyboard, like I did, while you're getting this one all cleaned up. Now, take your keycap remover, or your bare hands if you're going that route, and start removing the keycaps by getting a good grip on them and pulling straight up. Note that the keycap removers can look quite different, but essentially function the same. It's important to always pull straight up to not damage the keys. This is the whole point of using a keycap remover to begin with. If you feel like you're having to force a key off, try repositioning the keycap puller to get a better angle. Pay special attention to the larger keys like shift, caps locks, tab, and enter. These keys can be attached by a wire and if damaged, can be difficult to repair. If there's any obvious debris on the keys, feel free to remove it now before we give them a bath. Once you've removed all of your keycaps, prepare a bowl of warm water and dish soap. Add your keycaps to the bowl and scrub them gently with your hands to remove excess grime. Once you've given them a scrub, go ahead and let them soak for half an hour or so. You can even start cleaning the rest of the keyboard at this point if you'd like. Once the keycaps have soaked for a bit, go to a sink and overflow the bowl with water while removing all of the dish soap. Make sure your drain isn't big enough for any keys to fit through in case they fall out of the bowl. I actually forgot to rinse my keys off at first and then I was drying them and I realized that putting them to dry full of all these bubbles wasn't really the best idea. Once all of the soap is out, lay out a microfiber towel to set the keys on and use another one to gently dry them as you remove them from the bowl. Shake them out a bit during this step to remove as much excess water as possible. Lay them out on the microfiber towel until they dry. This could take anywhere from an hour to many hours. I left mine to dry for about six hours and I flipped them over about halfway through to just kind of increase the airflow. Once you've got them all laid out, it's the perfect time to start cleaning the actual keyboard. The first step is to just flip it over and give it a good pat to get the big stuff out. It's best if you can do this part outside or in an area that you don't mind getting dirty. As for me, well, yeah, my desk was pretty gross after all of this was said and done. It will be totally worth it though if you decide to smash that like button. Next, use a brush, air duster, or a combination of both to get the semi-loose debris out. During this part of the cleaning, you may have to adjust your methods a bit or where you focus your cleaning depending on what you found underneath your keys. There will likely be some debris that is caked to the bottom and sides and you may even have some sticky areas to deal with. For this part, use the Q-tips and rubbing alcohol to scrub your keyboard clean. This is your best bet for getting old drink stains removed. You don't want too much excess liquid on the keyboard, but enough to penetrate the grime. Don't use a single Q-tip for too long or it will start to break down and leave little Q-tip fibers behind on your keyboard. I actually got frustrated with this when I was cleaning my own keyboard, but by also using a microfiber towel and some air duster, I was able to easily get rid of all of the Q-tip fibers. If you have some sticky keys, you may want to brush inside the switches a little bit. This fixed a couple keys on my keyboard that had been sticking since a drink spill a couple months ago. If your keys are still sticking after using this method, you'll have to remove all of these little screws that you see around the keyboard and remove the entire front plate for an even more thorough cleaning. If you want to remove as many hairs as possible from in and around your switches, grab a pair of tweezers to easily pull them out. You can spend as much time cleaning this part of the keyboard as you'd like, but beware. There is always another hair. Once most of the gunk is gone, use some air duster or a microfiber towel to remove any excess alcohol. Then grab another microfiber towel, add a little bit of rubbing alcohol or even a bit of water if you prefer, and clean the bottom and sides of the keyboard. Don't forget to get the cord if you're a completionist like me. At this point, you should begin to feel the sweet, sweet sensation of a clean and speedy typing future rise within your soul. But we still have one more step, putting it all back together again. First of all, make sure that the keycaps are completely dry before starting this step. I hope you remember to take a photo of your keyboard before taking the keys off. Use it to see exactly where all of the keys go on your particular keyboard. 
When putting the keys back on, make sure to press straight down from the top, and again, as when removing them, if you feel like you have to force them down too much, try to reposition them a bit to get a better angle. And that's it! Your keyboard should be fresh, clean, and looking like new again. Plug it in and give it a whirl! The keys should now be more responsive, less sticky, and you've likely extended the lifespan of your keyboard. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And by the way, I teach people how to type faster and be more productive on their computer. So you might be interested in one of these videos as well. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's all I have for you for today. It's time for me to go and enjoy this fresh, clean keyboard. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.